Uh, hey Nexus Core, back at it again. No, we're Nexus Core. No, I'm Nexus Core. You're a loser. Core. You right. Loser. I hardly know her. <laughs> I hate myself, so I've just spent a shit ton of money on Neo Nectar support and try three. We get it. You're privileged and Jewish. My bad. Um, this is my Musketeer deck because Musketeers are actually really good and really fun, so you should play them. So we got the starter is um <laughs> as the great Seto Kai would call the Blue Eyes White Musketeer Melan. Or baby blue eyes musketeer Maylan. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry, I'm just eating chips. I hate you. So what it does is it's counter boss one move to soul. Richard, do you like those chips from the Onslaught of Dragon Soul <laughs> set? Counter boss one move to soul check top four. Call a musketeer, and if you have a copy of that another card of that copy of that card on the field, it gets 3k. It's um it's an early game starter. It's good. It's better than the other musketeer starters, which are a grade three searcher and a Legion specific card, and I don't run Legion in this deck because it's not that good. Um, we got four copies of the new grade 3 White Clover Musketeer Mimi Reedy. So, she's a nice card. GV1, at the end of your turn you can take two normal Musketeers and move them to the bottom of your deck, so you know, not decking out's really cool. But it also has this really good stride skill where when you stride a musketeer, it gains the act ability where you can counter bust one and retire a musketeer, check top four, call two musketeers, and send the rest to the drop zone. So what's nice about this is it's not like Asha where you clone what's on the field. You can give it the ability and call something, and then you can kill it to check top four and call. And... Um, Musketeers, not a lot of their cards actually give you a field. There are only like four or five where your field size actually increases due to effects. So the fact that like this one can actually plus your field is really nice to have. So she's a great card. Uh, the backup grade three is White Lily Musketeer Cecilia. The reason why I'm running her is because I don't like Legion in this deck. The issue with Legion in this deck is Musketeer is honestly a really gr early game heavy deck. So, running Legion hinders the early game because you have to run a 9k vanilla, and why would you run a 9k vanilla when you could run a 9k with an actually good skill? <coughs> As well, in this deck, there's also a Cecilia G unit that I'll get into, and you're running her because it's a Musketeer G unit, and if you're going to run Cecilia, you might as well... Because the Cecilia G unit is heart-restricted. You need to have a Cecilia heart, so... If you're running that G unit anyways, you might as well be able to use its skill by running Cecilia. Richard, I saw that post. I posted it. Also, the few times when you can use its limit break, it can come in handy just to give you a field early on. So, I like Cecilia. I don't really care for Legion. Um, grade 2s. We got four copies of um, Cherry Blossom Musketeer Augusta, which is a 12k attacker. It's really nice for early game, because if you ride grade 2 first, you can go 12k on a grade 1, forcing 10k drop. Or if you give it a 7k, you can force 15k off of a grade 2. It's because of this card's existence that I can beat people before they even ride to grade 3. Now, the other card that lets me beat people before they ride to grade 3, which is probably one of the best musketeers, one of the best cards in the set period, is the Prunus Cerulea... Musketeer Tessa, who is beautiful card. Beautiful card. Her powers are very bigly. So... What? Yes. So, what she does is on van or rear, because, you know, why not? Whenever you call a musketeer, if you have three other musketeers on the field, she gains 2k. So, basically, you ride to, um, Tessa. You got Malin because it's your starter. You call Augusto, and you call Augusto, she gains 2k because you've got three other Musketeers. So, she gains 2k when you call it with the three, but also, if you have a face-up Musketeer in the G-Zone, which helps you, helps bolster the whole running Cecilia G-Unit thing, if you have a Musketeer in the G-Zone, the card you call gains an additional 4k. So this card is basically like Liberator Bruno, but better. So she's an amazing card. It's also thanks to her that I beat people before they can get to grade three. Because I have I played like three games earlier today where on my grade two ride turn I had two three columns of upwards of 
18k. I had a 26k attack when I was at grade 2. I won while grade locked because I had two Tessas and I got them above 24k. So Tessa's friggin' amazing. And then the last grade 2 is three copies of Pansy Musketeer Silvio. It's a 7k grade 2, and what she does is when you call her, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a Musketeer, you can call it. Everything in this deck is Musketeers, so you're going to basically just get a free unit, which is great in Musketeer, because even if the unit sucks, you can retire it and call something new with the abilities. So basically, it's a Musketeer that gives you field, which is great. Also, depending on your setup, it's an instant plus 4k to Tessa, so she helps make really good power combo plays. So, Sylvia's great card. You, um, Some of you who play Musketeers notice that I'm not running Kaivant, which is a... um. Which is an, a nice grade two. It's Kaivon is when you call it, you can kind of bust when retire something checked up for to call. I don't run it because the grade two space is honestly kind of clunky. I have enough things that get Kaivon's job done well enough. And Kaivon doesn't have an aggro skill like Tessa or Augusto. So Tessa and Augusto's aggro game helps bolster it in a way that Kaivon really doesn't. So I prefer just the aggression over Kaivon. Um, grade ones, I'm running three of the Musketeer PG and one of the Quintet Wall. Um, honestly, it's because the PG, when I finished this deck, was like $10, $15, and I didn't want to deal with it. And the Quintet Wall's fine. Like, she's thick ass, though. True. Honestly, I'm running her because she's thick as hell. But, like, the deck's fine. Three PGs, Quintet Wall's good. Um, Sentinels. We pl you should know why Sentinels are good. No. Sorry. Um, four copies of Rebecca, which is like the grade one Kaivon to on call, kind of plus one retire, checked up for call. Um, it's a good grade one. It helps uh, alter your field with some nice, nice dank plays. She's a good grade one. Uh, four copies of Tatiana from the new set. Tatiana is beautiful. I am in love with her. She's GB1, retire herself. At the beginning of your ride phase, you could pay the cost, and if you do, when you stride, if you stride into a musketeer, you don't need to pay the call cost. So basically, because she's searchable by the basic mechanics of musketeers, it's a free stride. And something that I just have to say, because I know someone is just is not going to understand this, so I have to describe how the play works. Let's say you're... you're it is very hard. You're at GB1, you're on Cecilia, you have Tatiana. You start your turn, draw, you enter the ride phase, you use Tatiana's ability to kill her. When you stride, the cost is free. But because how riding works, you ride and then you stride, you can re-ride into Miarita and then actually use Tatiana's free stride to go into a G unit. Because you... Because Tatiana does not say stride a unit face down from face down. It says when you stride, it can be free. So it doesn't matter when you do it, provided you do it, though, it, the cost is null and void, which is what makes her also really good. I thought void was the antagonist of the card fight anime. No, that was um, season two. Oh. And right. three, kind of. Yeah, this is G-Man. Come on. I mean, we don't know about that yet. You we right. still got that hint from the last episode. Oh, you're right. Miguel exists. And there's a new episode today, which we haven't watched yet. You're right. I'm over a year behind. The uh, The last grade one is Ruth. She's a 10k attacker. Early game is cool. Um, also, yeah. Ruth is cool. Early game is nice. Um, triggers. We've got four copies of the Blue Rose Musketeer Ernst. If you are not running... <laughs> It's 9.30 at night. So... It's actually 9.46. Um, what, if you're not running Ernst, you're playing this deck wrong. Like, I'm sorry. That's just how it is. What Ernst does is it's counterblast one, move him, act. So it's, it's basically... Catch goal is a ripoff of Ernst. What Ernst does is act, counterblast one, move it to the bottom of the deck, check top four for a musketeer and call it. So basically, Musketeer. This was re released in Musketeer's Didn't second. Come first? No, Mus this was released in Musketeer in Musketeer's second support set. So BT fourteen. Oh. This was before Musketeer was a false archetype. So there was an issue of like actually seeing 
call targets when you check top four. So the issue with that is sometimes you would see triggers. This is a good trigger to call because even if you call it, you can just put it back. And also, thanks to cards like Tessa, you can make insane power plays so you aren't even hindered by the fact that it's a stand. Ernst is amazing. Um, next, four copy of the new heel, um, Camille Musketeer Nicole, which is just the new heel. Her art's ten times better than that disgusting-looking Hannah, so I'm running her. Um, four copies of the new crit, uh, Frieza Musketeer Rosalie, which is same thing, it looks much better than Night Queen Musketeer Daniel. And the last trigger is four copies of Gardenia Musketeer Elaine, which is, um, great because it's another good trigger to call. It's when it's called by the effect of a Musketeer, you can counter charge too. This deck is kind of counter blast heavy. This works with, this helps save you from that, and it's trigger with a skill. Under the G zone, as I said before, I'm running four copies of Cecilia. What Cecilia does is counterblast one, retire two, check top five, call three musketeers. So she she's a musketeer that pluses your field. She You need to have a Cecilia heart to do this, though, by the way. Um, she pluses your field, works with the Cecilia grade three, really good for stride and great at filtering. Also, the other musketeer G unit... Filter? Filter. 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 But also, um, you have Musketeers of two G units, this being one of them, and the other one, its cost flips any face down Musketeer. So, even if you don't go into Cecilia, you can use that card to flip Cecilia face up as a cost target. So, she's still good at four and a half. And that G unit is a phenomenal, phenomenal card the Rubellum Lily Mu Splendorous Musketeer Myra. What she does is she has an act ability Soul Blast 1. Flip any face down Musketeer G unit face up, and she herself gains an auto. Uh, if you have a Musketeer heart, she gains an ability. That ability is when you call a Musketeer for every Musketeer rear guard, that card gains 2k. What is great about that ability, first off, is if you do not have any cards on the field, what you are what you can do is use the cards in your hand and shit out a giant field instantly, and they're all going to gain power, because they all gain 2k for each. So in that case, plus 2k, plus 4k, plus 6k, plus 8k, plus 10k, because Myra's an amazing card. She also works amazingly with Miorita, because Miorita's call 2, they'll both gain power off of each other. So basically, Myra's a beautiful, beautiful G-guard, and yeah, she's great. Uh, she's amazing. She helps She helps make stand triggers viable because she makes ridiculous power plays. Because I'm running um, 10k Vanillas, I am running one copy of Rain Element Madu because uh, some they're, while rare, it has occurred f frequently, well not frequently, but it's kind of often, where I'm on Cecilia and I don't really have the resources to go into the Cecilia G unit, so just being able to stride for free is kind of nice and pull off GB2 for Myra. Because Myra is a GB2, she's not first stride, so, um, Madu's nice. Next, I'm running one copy of Scryu. The deck, it's must, it's a Neo Nectar deck, it can kind of conserve hand pretty well, so Scryu discard 10k for power. Um, two copies of Dismal, because, uh, again... You have, with cards like Tessa, you have important rear guards you're going to want to keep. So protecting them is kind of good, just to do. And I'm running two copies of Rain Breath, because Rain Breath is still one of the best G Guardians in this entire game. And one of the reasons why it's great is in this deck, it works amazingly. Let's say you um you ride to grade three first, so you G guard first. You um your opponent you're not you have that no face up cards in the G zone. You G guard with Rain Breath. You use Rain Breath's ability to call Tatiana from your hand. Then at the end of your turn, because Tatiana is on the field and you have a face up G unit, you can use her GB one and stride for free instantly without having to pay any discard cost at any point. So Rain Breath combos amazingly like that. Another great um, Rain Breath combo is while it's not actually inherently broken. It's just more fun just because it pisses off your opponent. So what you can do is you can use Rain Breath. 
use its ability to call Rebecca, Rebecca skill, kill something, to call something else, and you can just use skills on your opponent's turn and just make them frustrated as they have to wait for you to do something that isn't guarding, and it's just kind of fun to annoy people like that. But, yeah. Rain Breath, beautiful card. Beautiful card. Now, I'm out the, down to the last two G-Units. So basically, honestly, in this deck, the only G-Units you really ever use are Cecilia and Myra. So, the choice is really between Vera or Asha. I chose Vera, okay? You see, here's why. I was torn be because I use Madu more than both, so I decided to run Madu over them. So, so if, if I was not running Madu, I'd cut down a G-Guard and just run a third... Uh, just run more copies of them. But basically, the reason why I'm only running... A, uh, but you have to really run them because they flip themselves. So, it's important to... We, we need to talk about why. So, look very closely at Asha. Now look very closely at Vera. Or Verano, I should say. I was torn because they were both pretty equal in terms of practicality. So I just had... I really had no idea how to pick which one I wanted to run. So, a friend of mine said to me, Gabe, just look into your heart and ask yourself. Ass or tits? So, I just told Osh to go fuck herself. And here, that's why Verano's in my deck. My boy! <laughs> my boy! Ass is always number one! And that's the story. Now, basically, to do this, to really decide what you want to do, are you an ass man or are you a tits man? Thighs. That's Asha. It's a man of culture. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a well-traveled man. But um, not to not to um, just take. I I just want to preface this. I don't want to like just delve this into me sexualizing fucking cardboard. But real Isn't that what we've done for the past half decade? You're right. But um, basically, Verano and Asha they serve the exact same purpose. So it literally didn't matter to me which one I ran. I just thought that was like the, a really funny way to go about it. So God bless Verano and God bless her ass and God. Bless America. Yeah, I don't want to sexualize it too much. <laughs> My bad. Welcome to Musketeers. Welcome to Neo Nectar. Early game is a cool thing to have. Rush your opponent into the dirt and kill them before they can even ride to grade three. Peace out, fam. Please don't white knight us. <laughs> please don't keep that. Please don't white knight us.